Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you three different ways to do a pot holder. This way here, no binding, really easy. This one here looks like you have binding but done in a different way. And this one has regular binding strips. I'll even show you how to do a loop so you can hang it up. Okay, let's get started. I recommend if you're going to work with projects that have cotton batting in it, you need to use something called a walking presser foot. This particular pot holder is super easy and I recommend it for those of you who are a beginner, try this one first. So you'll need two pieces of cotton batting, eight inches square, and two pieces of cotton fabric that are also eight inches square. So you place your cotton batting down first, take the back of one of your fabrics, the back is also called wrong side, it's not the pretty side. Place it down. Now you're looking at the pretty side. Take the other piece of fabric and put the pretty side down and it's called the right side. Then place pins all around all four edges. Then you need to indicate an area that is an opening so you can turn it front side out later. So I have one pin here and you're going to back stitch here. So you're going to start on one side of the opening. Stitch down towards this first corner, but stop when you're about one quarter inch away. And then lift up your presser foot, leave your needle down, turn your fabric, and continue that. Do that at all four corners. When you come back around here to the two pins, that means you need to stop sewing and back stitch. Then you need to trim a little fabric off the corners. You're going to trim your corners down to about an eighth of an inch wide from the stitch line. Make sure you don't cut into your stitches. Cut a little bit off on each side. And you do that on all four corners. Then go through the opening and begin turning it front side out. Then you need to go inside with something that you can poke your corners out with. Please don't use the point of the scissors because you can push right through your fabric. Then I recommend going to your ironing board and pressing it all flat. While you're pressing, turn your edges in on both sides and press those also. Then place pins over the opening to hold it together. Now you're going to stitch around all four sides close to the edge. So you're just going to start down. Whenever you come to a corner, always leave your needle down, lift up that presser foot, stitch all the way around. And then the easiest type of quilting stitch to do is to stitch from corner to corner. So stitch straight across this way and straight across this way. For this next pot holder, you will need one square of cotton fabric that is 10 inches square. Then for the fabric on the front, you'll need one 8 inch square and you'll also need two squares of cotton batting, 8 inches square. On your 10 inch square, take a ruler, put the 1 inch line on your ruler on the raw edge and draw a line. And you continue to do that on all four sides. And then you need to do your quilting stitches. You could do that first one that I showed you, just going corner to corner, or you can do any other quilting stitch pattern you prefer. Do this next step at your ironing board. Take one edge and fold it over and press it with your iron. Then fold it over your fabric and then press it again and go to the opposite side and do the same thing and then stitch from right here across over to here and you do it on both sides. So now you're going to fold and press the last two sides. So you're going to take this, this corner here, take the fabric and fold it over like this and press it down. Do the same thing on the other corner. Then fold the fabric over again and press and fold it over again and press. And then just stitch your last two sides down real close to the edge right along here. For this last pot holder, all your squares are cut 8 inches. Take the fabric for the back and put the prettiest side down. 
then place your cotton batting on top, then take your fabric for the top and have pretty side up. And then do whatever quilt stitch pattern you want. Remember, you should always place pins down before you try to do your quilting stitches. You will need a strip of fabric that's two inches wide. So I recommend that you keep your fabric folded like it was folded in the store when you bought it with selvage edges together. Clean up that first edge, in other words, cut it straight, then move over two and a half inches and cut your strip. Go to the ironing board, fold your strip in half, and press it all the way down. Now have the back of your pot holder facing up at you. Take your binding strip and place the middle or the end of the binding strip somewhere in the middle on that side. Go over about two and a half inches and begin stitching. You're gonna stitch a one quarter inch wide seam. Stitch down towards this corner. Stop when you're a quarter of an inch away. Then do a few back stitches. Then take the binding strip and fold it so that it's right along this edge, straight across. Place your finger or thumb there. Pull it over your finger or thumb. Put the fold right on this edge here and line up the binding strip on the next edge. Then I would put a pin here to hold this corner. Place it back in your sewing machine and stitch this side down. You're gonna do this type of fold at all four corners. When you get to the last corner, go ahead and fold it and put a pin there to hold it, but don't stitch just yet. Now you can see I have excess fabric here. So this is what I recommend you do. Take it, fold it over the end over here, and then I always pull it back just a little bit so I can see how much I want to cut off. You want to have about a quarter inch overlap or maybe just slightly more so that in case you didn't cut off enough, you have that little extra fabric. So go ahead and cut it off. Now pull the ends out, fold it in half. Unfold the ends of the binding strip. Place the raw edges together and stitch a one quarter inch seam across. Then finger press that little seam open. Fold your strip back, place it down, pin it down, and then stitch crossed, closing it up. Now fold your corners over and you're gonna fold all of this fabric out going towards the front. Before you turn it over, go ahead and press this binding so that it goes out. Then turn it over the front and beginning to fold it down and place pins around the edges to hold it down. Now, as you're pinning, you notice your corners are gonna look like this. So I'm gonna show you a really easy trick to finish that. So you have a pin on each side of that corner. Take another straight pin and press down and push towards this, size over, this side over here. Fold this over and pin it, and that's how you get your mitered corners. Then go ahead and stitch close to the edges all the way around. Now there are several different ways you can make a hanging loop. This is one of the easiest ones. So take a strip that's two inches wide and about four inches long. Take each end and fold it over and press. Then fold this in half and press. Then unfold it. Take these edges and press it towards that center fold line and press and do the same thing over here. So now it looks like this. Now fold it in half, press it again. Then you're gonna stitch close to the edge all the way across. Have the back of your pot holder facing up. Fold it and pin it down like this. Then stitch straight across right here. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. Now I have many different pot holder tutorials with different embellishments on the front. So there's a lot you can do to a pot holder. 
I'm going to have links to my potholders listed down below your YouTube screen. There'll be a playlist there, so you can click on that and learn how to do other things on them. Also, I have sewing tips of the week, which are very beneficial to you. They're very educational, and they show you a lot of different ways to sew a lot of different projects. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.